सी आई ई टी एन सी ई आर टी प्रेजेंट नेशनल करिकुलम फ्रेमवर्क टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी थ्री पार्ट डी स्कूल कल्चर एंड स्कूल प्रोसेस पेज नंबर फाइव वन थ्री दिज अ पिक्चर इन विच मेनी स्टूडेंट्स आर सिटिंग एंड दे आर बींग सर्वड मील्स बाय देर टू टीचर्स पेज नंबर फाइव वन फोर दिस पार्ट डिस्कसेज द काइंड ऑफ ईथोज स्कूल्स नीड टू क्रिएट दैट इज एसेंशियल टू अचीव द एम्स ऑफ एजुकेशन एंड विसेज इन दिस एन सी एफ डेवलपिंग एंड मेंटेनिंग सच अ कल्चर एंड ईथोज नीड्स कॉन्शियस एंड डेलिब्रेट एफर्ट The result of such efforts is an immersive experience for students and this experience should enable a positive learning environment as well as result in acquiring desirable values and dispositions. Chapter 1 on school culture outlines ways in which a school can cultivate a rich, vibrant and shared life of learning for all its members. Chapter 2 on school processes discusses various aspects of administrative and academic functioning that schools can consider to become effective in achieving their organizational and educational goals. Chapter 1 School Culture Page number 515 School culture plays a significant and direct role in learning. It enables an effective learning environment by ensuring that students are actively motivated to learn with attention and enthusiasm, kept engaged and excited, and encouraged to develop attitudes of curiosity and wonders that are important for learning in addition to having a positive impact on learning school culture is one of the biggest influences on the development of values and dispositions among students which are important curricular goals figure 11 there are 10 boxes explaining the first empathy and respect sensitivity ahinsa respect for elders courtesy forgiveness compassion in second responsibility swachhta respect for the environment patience respect for public property sustainability in third honesty integrity satya the fourth has fraternity patriotism tolerance peace rootedness and pride in india fifth highlights justice equity and fairness diversity pluralism gender equality liberty respect for all the sixth box highlights seva which means nishkam karma sacrifice helpfulness seventh highlights the rational thought and scientific temper the eighth box is for creative imagination and the ninth is highlighting hard work and commitment and tenth box sums it up all as courage and resilience page number 516 hence school culture must be systematically shaped towards achieving the desired goals NEP 2020 states all participants in the school education system including teachers principals administrators counselors and students will be sensitized to the requirements of all students the notions of inclusion and equity and the respect dignity and privacy for all persons Such an educational culture will provide the best pathway to help students become empowered individuals who in turn will enable society to transform into one that is responsible towards its most vulnerable citizens. NEP 6.19
School culture must be a carefully integrated dimension of the curriculum, which will play a significant role in developing the values and dispositions that is NCF aims for. It must also enable a deeply engaging and active environment for the students, enabling learning in all its dimensions. There are other aspects such as engagement and motivation of teachers and the involvement of the community that directly affect students' learning. While these are important, they are not taken up in detail in this NCF. Section 1.1 What is school culture? School culture has two aspects. The first is values, norms and beliefs which form the school culture and the second is behaviours, relationships and practices in which the culture is manifested and experienced. The elements that form the culture and its manifestation are deeply interrelated but it is important to distinguish between these two aspects because students learn from the manifestations. It is these manifestations and thus the experience of the students that must systematically enable the achievement of curricular goals. We see these manifestations or constituent elements of the experience of culture can be noticed in three categories. A. Relationships This refers to how the school staff members, students and other stakeholders relate and work with each other. For example, teachers listening to students patiently and showing concern about their physical and emotional well-being, collaborating with other teachers to provide a more wholesome experience for students and welcoming parents. Participation in the learning process demonstrate the culture of the school. B. Symbols these are about what is considered worth displaying and celebrating in schools. For example, there are various kinds of visual displays that we find in schools displayed or written on school walls. And the pictures and paintings in the school corridor which communicate what is valued by the school or the students lauded in the school assembly for specific actions. Page number 517. C. Arrangements and Practices. These are arrangements related to various classroom and school processes that signal the kind of culture the school has already established or aims to achieve. An example of an arrangement is seating and an example of practice is how age groups or genders are distributed in sports or housekeeping activities. Schools must fully utilize the potential and impact of such culture-related aspects of organizing daily life, enabling valuable opportunities for making full educational use of learning spaces and possibilities, not limited to classroom teaching. Section 1.2 School Culture and Its Impact on Learning School culture contributes to students' learning in two ways. A. By creating a safe, encouraging and nurturing learning environment which is necessary for all kinds of learning, engagements that are organized at school. B. By directly contributing to the attainment of curricular goals through the development of desirable values and dispositions as discussed in Part A, Chapter 1, Section 1.3.1 of this NCF. 1.2.1 Developing an Enabling Learning Environment The learning environment of a school can be characterized either by constraint compliance and control or it could be an atmosphere that enables individual by instilling trust and self-discipline, inspiring them to stretch their perceived limits and achieve their goals. In reality, this may be a continuum 
and not an either or situation however the basic tone does convey which side of the continuum the school desired to be an inclusive and nurturing culture forms the bedrock on which all school activities and pedagogical practices rest grow and succeed mutual respect a non-threatening environment and healthy relationships among students and teachers are essential for dialogue and collaboration without these learning become tedious for everyone involved along with a vibrant and caring environment acting responsibly and demanding rigor in learning are equally important characteristics of a school environment that contribute to achieving curricular goals the given table maps the key characteristics of such an enabling learning environment and some constituent elements of school culture that contribute to achieving them these elements are relationship symbols arrangements and practices table 1.21 there is a table given on which the left side highlights characteristics of an enabling environment and on the right side the constituent elements of school culture are given inclusive participation of all students in classroom activities as well as other school processes is ensured no discrimination occurs based on gender caste religion or any other factors content pedagogy and assessment practices are carefully designed to ensure inclusion page number 518 violence free teachers and senior students can be observed going about their tasks and routines responsibly clear expectations are set on behavior and work and ample support for fulfilling these expectations is given persistence to complete one's work even when it may take time or seem challenging is encouraged individuals are encouraged to acknowledge and express gratitude for the help received from others encouraging good habits of learning teachers and senior students can be observed going about their tasks and routines responsibly clear expectations are set on behavior and work and ample support for fulfilling these expectations is given persistence to complete one's work even when it may take time or seem challenging is encouraged individuals are encouraged to admit their faults and mistakes humbly individuals are encouraged to acknowledge and express gratitude for the help received from others caring teachers check on students health try to know how they feel their interest areas what makes them happy and the challenges they are facing teachers and students find ways of celebrating small achievements and progress made by students immediate help is provided when someone is not well or going through a difficult time school is concerned about the student's family when warranted responsibility teachers and senior students can be observed being punctual and following the school timetable teachers and senior students can be seen attending to their tasks diligently students share responsibilities in the school assembly bal sabha various students committees and assignments given by teachers students participate actively in decision making processes in the classroom in peer groups and students committees 1.2.2 development of values and dispositions a need for systematic and deliberate effort students derive their values and dispositions from two main sources their family and community and their school 
in both these spheres of their lives the quality of relationships symbols arrangements and practices which are the constitutive experienced elements of culture determines what they imbibe and how they have behave in these spaces the school principal and teachers often tend to stay with what they inherit as the prevailing school culture and processes and their own values and dispositions while principals tend to focus their energy on administrative compliances most teachers remain confined to the demands of syllabus completion and the focused work of developing values remains poorly attended as an outcome schools may miss developing desirable values and dispositions and may also end up inadvertently or in some cases advertently reinforcing various kinds of discriminatory social practices related to caste gender class religion region migration language disabilities physical appearance perceived talent smart versus weak students and more page number 519 systematic and deliberate efforts are needed for the development of values and dispositions the approach to this must be comprehensive and done with all seriousness very much like the efforts needed for the teaching of subjects b values and dispositions articulated as goals in nep 2020 nep 2020 gives us a comprehensive list of values that need to be fostered through schooling all these values are individually meaningful and important however because of certain common core characteristics and similarities the values can be clustered together the table which is given here list these clusters of values and dispositions and also provides some constituent elements of school culture that will enable their development table 1.22 left side of the table values and dispositions are given and on the right side constituent elements of school culture with some examples are given empathy respect sensitivity ahimsa respect for elders courtesy forgiveness compassion the practice of calm respectful dialogue rather than violent reactions when one breaks school rules no corporal punishments bullying threatening verbal nonverbal abuse mistakes are seen as a natural part of the learning process refraining from carrying grudges and all individuals are encouraged to practice forgiveness and support each other to heal from unpleasant experiences encouragement and support are available for all teachers care about students health feelings and interests respect is expressed in various forms towards elderly members of the immediate community larger society and nation they are remembered through readings and discussions about their life and achievements they are invited for interaction and inspiration responsibility swachhata respect for the environment patience respect for public property sustainability individuals follow school rules and regulations and complete tasks and assignments on time sharing of school level responsibilities in school assembly bal sabha various student committees students and teachers participate in cleaning duties and community service periodically students participate in decision making 
processes in the classroom, in peer groups and student committees. Individuals practice judicious and sustainable use of resources within the school and outside. There is a practice of proper upkeep of one's belongings, classroom and school property and repair and restoration of damaged property and equipment regularly. Page number 520 Honesty Integrity Satya Individuals practice being truthful and school staff and senior students are equally encouraged to do the same. Demonstrating the right action even through difficulties and challenges, persisting to complete one's work even when it may take time or seems challenging. Individuals are encouraged to admit to their faults and mistakes humbly. The school community credits and acknowledges others who have been helpful and supportive. There is active reading and sharing of literature, real stories exemplifying honesty, integrity and satya. Fraternity, patriotism, tolerance, peace, rootedness and pride in India. Students receive a lot of exposure to various forms of diversity and richness of traditions and cultural practices of our country through school assemblies, displays on campus and excursion visits to important places. All subjects talk about the Indian contribution to the world in that discipline, celebration of national festivals, students learn about the Indian freedom struggle. Justice, equity and fairness, diversity, pluralism, gender equality, liberty, respect for all. The school discourages all discriminatory practices and adheres to the laws of the nation. There is mingling and bonding between students and teachers from diverse backgrounds. The school ensures equal opportunities for all genders and students from all socio-cultural backgrounds. Respect and space are given for varied opinions, interest areas and talents in the school community. There is a care for students' health, feelings and interest areas. The school provides nutritious meal to all the encourages togetherness in eating the meal. The school provides accessible physical infrastructure and assistive devices ensuring the participation of all students in all school activities. Seva, Nishkam Karma, Sacrifice Helpfulness Individuals help those in need within the school and outside. Periodic community service opportunities are available to students. There is a focus on performing one's duties and tasks rather than on personal gains and other benefits. There is an active appreciation for relinquishing one's desires and comforts for the sake of tasks for the greater good. Focus on teamwork and the growth of all individuals in the school. Rational thought and scientific temper. The school encourages questions and inquiry-driven exploration. Seeking evidence that supports facts is deemed important. There is an active discouragement of rumours and misbeliefs. Analyzing information from multiple sources and viewpoints is encouraged. Exploration of new methods to solve various problems occur regularly. Page number 521 Creative Imagination there is encouragement for creative tasks among students and teachers in different subjects. For example, students create own books, prepare display boards and apply their learning to solve hypothetical imaginary or real-life problems. Available physical space and other resources are creatively used. Students are involved in the creation 
and use of TLMs. Students are involved in enhancing the aesthetics of the school environment and greenery on school premises. Hard work and commitment. Consistency and regular practice of all learning tasks and routine are maintained. There is an expectation that individuals take their learning seriously and complete tasks that they begin. Students work towards goals set by the teachers and the principal. Literature, storytelling and in-person sharing by people on hard work and commitment happens regularly. Courage and resilience. Individuals explore multiple strategies while solving problems. They persist with learning tasks despite errors and failures. Efforts are made to resolve conflicts peacefully through dialogue. There is open sharing of vulnerabilities, fears and other emotions and help is sought when required. The following sections detail the constituent elements as relationships, symbols, arrangements and practices of a school culture that can lead to these outcomes. Box 1.21 Working through challenges Building a school culture that reflects the practices discussed in this section is likely to face a lot of internal and external challenges. Internally, the challenge may come from the staff and students when their beliefs and behaviour do not align with what is being proposed here. Similarly, the prevailing cultural practices in families and society may conflict with what is being attempted here. For example, it would be challenging for a school to inculcate the practice of gender equity when there are strong beliefs enabling gender discrimination at home or in the local community. These kinds of challenges and conflicts are often inevitable but surpassable in the journey of establishing desired school culture. A tenacious and steadfast engagement with these challenges would be required to see long-lasting changes. Page number 522 Section 1.3 Constituent Elements of School Culture 1.3.1 Relationships Relationships are in this context, those that exist in a school, the essential expectations in them and how these expectations are fulfilled responsibly. While at the core of school culture is the teacher-student relationship, the quality of student-student, teacher-principal and parent-teacher-principal relationships to have a direct or indirect bearing on student learning. The following are core characteristics of strong and inspiring relationships that a school needs to develop. A. Mutual trust and respect. B. Openness, communication and collaboration. C. Care. D. Responsibility. These core characteristics are seen in the context of school and learning these are interrelated and not watertight categories. When you trust someone, you are open to sharing and collaborating. Similarly, a sense of responsibility naturally leads to caring for others. 1.3.1.1 Mutual Trust and Respect Trust and respect are fundamental to all relationships. Trust in this context refers to the basic belief in the human capacity to learn and the intent to exercise that capacity to pursue worthwhile goals. By respect, we mean recognizing and valuing an individual's presence, views, identity and fundamental rights bestowed by the Indian constitution. In teacher-student relationships, teachers must openly show that they trust the capability of students and that they can all learn. They respond 
appropriately to every student's pace of learning and make efforts to understand them as individuals and their backgrounds. Teachers foster good relationships by helping students feel a connection with the whole school community while building an identity and space for themselves. And by listening to students patiently and caring about their physical and emotional well-being. Students will feel respected when teachers give them time and space to share their feelings, views and work. For enriching student-student relationships, conscious efforts must be made to create opportunities for students to work collaboratively with peers from different socio-cultural and economic backgrounds, age groups, genders and abilities. From an early age, students need to be encouraged to speak politely, pay attention to one another and demonstrate care and helpfulness at any given opportunity. The respect and status that teachers once enjoyed as gurus need to be restored. In teacher-principal administration relationship, trust and respect are critical for sustaining motivation commitment and collaboration. It is done by providing good working conditions, that is, having formal and informal ways of listening to teachers' views and experiences, including them in decision-making, giving them space to exercise their professional expertise within the larger policy guidelines and appreciating their hard work. Page number 523. Another important aspect is the teacher-teacher relationship. All teachers from diverse backgrounds, genders, age groups and experiences must be respected and supported by other teachers. They need to be provided opportunities to learn from each other and to work collaboratively. Apart from academic sharing, teachers also need the opportunity to rejuvenate themselves. This could be purposively planned, be it engaging in sports and cultural activities or having some celebrations or excursions. Schools need to build trust and respect in their relationship with parents and their wider community. Parents need to feel comfortable in approaching school principals and teachers. When the school reaches out to them, welcomes them, gives them regular updates, consults them on relevant matters and tries to use their knowledge and expertise, parents feel valued and respected. Schools must work towards the community feeling a sense of constructive and positive ownership of the school. 1.3.1.2 Openness, Communication and Collaboration Openness, communication and collaboration are characteristics of healthy relationships. When there is a trust and respect in any relationship, people become open to sharing and listening to one another empathetically. They are then more than ready to engage in collective tasks because they derive pleasure and strength from cooperative working together. Here are a few ways in which schools can enable these qualities in their members. A. There should be spaces for open conversations such as circle time in classes and daily diary sharing in school assemblies, as well as encouragement for reaching out to teachers and school principals for honest sharing. B. Many opportunities must be created for teachers and students to work together. This helps them strengthen mutual trust and respect for each other. This will also help them reflect on their own conditioning and to build interpersonal skills. C. Art, music, drama and sports naturally provide opportunities where we need to work in groups. So, finding space for these subjects in the school timetable is necessary. Such creative and collaborative time is also required for teachers. D. 
it is very likely that with greater openness and communication and working together differences and conflicts will become more easily expressed and known this should be seen as an opportunity rather than an impediment to understanding and working with differences collectively some individual differences may get resolved some may get longer while a few may seem very challenging to resolve but all this should not dampen the spirit and come in the way of continuing to work collaboratively on tasks that matter for the advancement of the school all collaboration must be directed towards the pursuit of excellence students should be encouraged to set high expectations from themselves and be supported in their hard work to achieve their goals relationships often get tested when faced with a situation where classmates or schoolmates engage in a competition with each other be it in sports or some other type of competition such as debates essay writing or olympiads for maths and science school cultures should help students strive hard to excel in their pursuits and at the same time teach sports personship and sportiveness and how to deal with both success and failure gracefully one can compete without compromising values of cooperation empathy resilience appreciation of effort and excellence the feeling of mudita rejoicing in the achievement or success of others can also be developed this way page number 524 1.3.1.3 care care is an essential expression of nurturing relationships when one feels related to and responsible for the other typically caring means acknowledging the presence of others in simple ways through smiling greeting mindfully sharing the space with others and voicing one's views and suggestions honestly when we care for others we make efforts to get to know them better as individuals with their strengths and weaknesses likes and dislikes and gather some sense of what they have been through in life all this is important information that helps individuals live and work together with care for other people the need for caring is truly felt when an individual is undergoing difficult times that is when one is feeling unwell facing challenges in their personal life or going through challenging emotions for some reason this is when other need to extend support in ways that give strength and help the person cope and be well through the situation care is what people remember both timely expression of it as well as not having it when it was needed the timely expression of care goes a long way towards nurturing relationships 1.3.1.4 responsibility a relationship will be challenging to sustain if the related parties do not act responsibly towards each other in the context of school based relationships behaving responsibly means following the agreed upon rules and regulations of the school not acting in ways that hurt others and working towards completing one's tasks for achieving one's goal this applies to all those who are part of the school community students paying attention following instructions asking questions expressing their thoughts and doubts working cooperatively in groups working hard completing tasks supporting their peers practicing consistently and applying what they have learned to real life situations are what acting responsibly would mean in the student teacher relationship similarly for teachers making efforts to know individual students and their levels of learning listening to them planning for effective and engaging ways of teaching giving appropriate learning challenges and supporting them 
and assessing the progress for their learning to make necessary changes in teaching is acting responsibly. Ultimately, acting responsibly is about every role that an individual has in life. Students learning responsibility as integral to all roles in life is best achieved through observation of behavior of adults around them. 1.3.2 Symbols Schools try to communicate a lot through the use of symbols. A symbol is any form of visual sign, writing on the wall, paintings, idols or arrangements of physical objects that conveys what the school values as important. Such symbols may not only be displayed but also the kind of things celebrated or recognized as valuable in other ways. In some schools, one comes across this phrase, Shikshart aye sevarth jaye. Come to learn, go to serve. Right at the entry gate, this is a daily reminder to students about why they are coming to school and what they are expected to do with their learning. Page number 525. Here are few more symbolic displays that we generally come across in schools. A. Schools display hoardings and boards to emphasize what they feel is valuable about the school. It could be pictures of students who secure top ranks in board examination or different facilities the school provides. It could be about having smart classes or providing coaching in different sports. B. There are lots of sayings or quotes written on school walls. C. One may also find pictures of important and famous people and even idols representing certain religions either in principals, room, staff rooms, classrooms or school corridors. D. The choices and arrangements of physical objects also carry huge symbolic value. Principals' chairs often look very different from chairs for the staff. A school may choose not to provide chairs for teachers in classrooms so that they must remain standing and move about the classroom, keep themselves busy. The arrangement of furniture in classrooms also communicates the school's beliefs about teaching learning processes. E. Some schools paint entire walls with pictures, while others use display boards where students' work is presented. F. The kind of achievement or behaviour celebrated in the assembly or praised in public. Schools need to consciously and carefully decide how to effectively use the power of symbols and celebration. They must be in alignment with the values that schools are fostering. They will have to be inclusive, give space to diversity of good ideas and allow all students to contribute and learn from them. Here are some good practices in this regard. A. Instead of having permanent sayings or quotes on the walls, a better way would be to have a dedicated space for thought of the day and students could take responsibility for writing that on a small white board. This can become a practice of inclusion in itself as not only interesting thoughts by established, well-known personalities may be written but also valuable sayings from lesser-known individuals belonging to different communities can be displayed. This can be used as an occasion to talk about the values these people held important and lived their lives by. B. There could also be dedicated spaces for exhibiting artefacts representing local, regional and national cultural heritage. Here again, refraining from having permanent displays will help student learning. These could be a display of group project work too and they can remain there for a month. All students can be expected to read it and a quiz or sharing session in the school assembly based on the display would make for enjoyable learning. C. School corridors can have display boards where each class can display what they are learning. 
so others get a good sense of classroom work just by taking a walk around the school selection of students work for display will be crucial and one need not select the perfect looking or more visually appealing work display of work done by all students showing varied levels of capacity is far better as it fosters a sense of dignity for all levels of sincere work d schools may also name some rooms or halls even classes or buildings with the names of renowned personalities rivers and constellations there may be names given to students houses in larger schools these should also reflect the diversity of our country page number 526 School uniforms also have symbolic value. The color as well as the kind of clothing chosen communicates to the world the beliefs of the school. One may opt for a more traditional modern or gender neutral uniform. Consideration of local climate, safety, easy availability and cost effectiveness will reflect the school's sensitivity. F there could be a permanent notice board in each school where some school related information for visitors and some important phone numbers such as child helpline hospital school help desk and key behavioral expectations from all on campus can be displayed g there could be a thoughtfully constructed list of matters that should be highlighted in the assembly and recognized h sometimes school practice symbolic representation of hierarchy in unnecessary ways for example there may be a different cup mug in which the principal is served tea such practices need to be avoided as they go against the value a school must foster 1.3.3 arrangements and practices all schools require the help of certain classroom level and school level processes to function well all school processes require arrangements and practices for example the midday meal mdm is an important daily process in public and elementary schools to run the midday meal smoothly arrangements for procurements have to be made and a plan for cooking and serving is necessary schools have to organize menu preparation quality checks serving of food and proper utilization of food waste the nature of these arrangements and practices reflects inherent attitudes and fosters the beliefs and values about care nutrition and people's participation of a school as well as the education system In this section arrangements and practices around major school processes such as classroom processes school assembly meal time sports activities and engagement with parents and community have been taken up there are other processes too but the ones selected here are the key processes found in all schools matters of school processes are dealt with more exhaustively beyond the arrangements and practices which constitute school culture in the subsequent chapter 1.3.3.1 classroom practices different classroom practices directly and indirectly promote different values seating arrangement if all students always sit facing the blackboard in the classes it conveys a perception that the primary source of learning is the blackboard and the teacher a circular semicircular or small group seating arrangements from time to time allows for different learning experiences as students can interact with their peers and work collaboratively if there is a practice of placing students who are considered smart and enthusiastic in the front rows and others get seated at the back of the classroom 
then this practice in itself will reinforce how learning happens in a group and who learns and who does not. Separate seatings for boys and girls and students seating on the floor on mats while the teacher is always on a chair and other such arrangements that have the potential to establish unnecessary differences and hierarchies can easily be avoided with alternative arrangements. Page number 527 Availability and Accessibility of TLMs a classroom can be filled with rich learning possibilities with interesting educational material on the walls and in open racks collected over time. These can be made accessible by planning for their use in the schedule of learning activities for the class. When there is sufficient relevant material and students can make use of it, they are engaged meaningfully at different levels. This would make the learning in the class lively and more vibrant. Having a reading corner with a collection of books that are suitable for the learning levels and age groups of the students would encourage a culture of reading. Such practices clearly show the school's commitment to ensuring learning for all. Giving ownership and responsibility to students in the learning process. A classroom culture where students are wholly dependent on the teacher's instructions and reluctant to take initiative makes for a spiritless class. On the other hand, students actively taking charge of their learning process makes for spirited and vibrant learning. Students can be involved in preparing TLMs, displaying them on the walls, maintaining their own progress portfolio file, leading peer learning sessions and even being asked to do short teaching sessions under the guidance of teachers. Cleanliness The cleanliness and the tidiness of the classroom can be the responsibility of students. Before closing the day, the classroom can be cleaned and made tidy again for the next day. Learning Rituals there can be certain educational rituals that are followed during classroom processes. Different teachers may initiate and sustain different class preparation or learning rituals which can make these different classes diverse learning experiences. One teacher may make the whole atmosphere relaxed but focused while another may make it tense and intimidating. For example, some teachers start by having an informal chat and listening to what students would like to share before moving on to their teaching plan, while another teacher may just expect all those who could not do their homework to stand up and give an explanation. Movements, speaking, interactions, praise or scolding and expressing happiness and concern all may take forms that either prove detrimental and add richness and joy to the learning process. 1.3.3.2 School Assembly A lot can be achieved in the culture of the school through assemblies if this space is utilised effectively and creatively. Different groups of students can take the lead in organizing small group or whole school assemblies under the guidance of teachers. It could be a forum where not only the home language but also the whole range of language diversity in India can be given importance. Students can be encouraged to give presentations, sing songs and perform skits in several languages. Even if students learn to sing one song from a part of India other than their own, they feel some familiarity and connectedness. If there is enough space available, the whole group could dance to diverse forms of music selected from different parts of India. On important days, teachers and students can talk about different people or events that make that day memorable. Real stories of courage and resilience, Nishkam Karma and Seva can be narrated. Opportunities for sharing what students are learning 
in various subjects ranging from the library class to activities at home may be created. Students would be motivated to pay attention to display boards if there are a set of quizzes on them in the school hallway. Role plays and skits can be performed on various social issues to sensitize students and these can serve as springboards for discussion on current issues faced by our society and nation. Page number 528 the duration of the assembly, seating arrangement, anchoring responsibility, proper communication on what will be done each day of the week, use of musical instruments and a sound system and preparation for the assembly all need to be paid close attention to form a cultural perspective. For example, it would be difficult to have the whole assembly standing asking students to sit in class, wise lines may not be needed, as mingling with other students can be allowed. Even younger students can shoulder anchoring responsibility with seniors. 1.3.3.3 Meal Time The quality of the food served at meal times, seating arrangements and serving practices are all important cultural aspects that help members feel satisfied with the food that they partake in. Students from various socio-cultural backgrounds must sit and enjoy the meal together. For many students, this may be the only proper meal that they get during the day. So schools must pay the required attention to its preparation and nutritional value. Teachers need to check the quality of the meal as well as to participate in serving it and eating with the students. This will open opportunities for them to observe students' eating habits and have a dialogue with them afterwards to positively impact them. Good hygiene standards have to be maintained and groups of students and teachers can take up the responsibility of washing their own plates and checking for the cleanliness of utensils. 1.3.3.4 Distribution of work Students and teachers are engaged in the work of the school in other ways too. For example, arranging the midday meal, cleaning the school, preparing for the school day. All such work must be allocated and managed very thoughtfully. It must be inclusive and non-discriminatory from every perspective. It must not feed into some standard prejudices or stereotypes such as only girls should do food-related work or working involving physical labour is better done by children from specific communities. Distribution and management of schoolwork is a wonderful opportunity to build multiple values and capacities including a value for work and discipline, importance of teamwork and collaboration, a sense of equity and fairness, the sense of responsibility and good work ethic among others. 1.3.3.5 Sports Activities Regular sports activities for class groups and the whole school in the weekly timetable are extremely important to ensure physical and psychological fitness and cheer in students. The setting of the playground and the group dynamics among students during sports are usually very different from the classroom context. Many students may be far more skilled on the field than they are in the classroom. And these students can be encouraged to support teachers in conducting a particular sport for other students' groups. This will not only enable these students to feel appreciated and gain confidence, but also inculcate a participatory culture in sports. Schools must not let go of the opportunity a playground offers for building student-student and student-teacher relationships and teaching cooperation, teamwork, courage and resilience. Students of all genders 
should be encouraged to play all sports there could be specially designed games or modified rules for regular games to allow the inclusion and equal participation of students with disabilities students can be motivated to keep trying even if things get hard to improve their skills such as speed and accuracy on the field based on their previous performances students can set their own goals to work towards and teachers can also guide them to set the next level of goals to challenge themselves and grow page number 529 1.3.3.6 engaging with parents family and the community the culture of a school is reflected in the way it welcomes and engages with parents family the community and the other visitors irrespective of the parents family backgrounds attitudes and dispositions schools need to make them feel welcome and comfortable there should be clear communication with parents family about when they can visit the school they should be warmly treated and attended to parents families want to know what their children are learning so the sharing from the teacher side cannot be just about academic challenges and struggles but a much more holistic report about students overall education at school The reception area of the school premises should have displays that reflect the kind of working happening in the school. Educational and fun activities and games designed for the active engagement of parents will ensure they have a memorable time visiting the school. They can also be invited to share their experience and knowledge with students as part of the curricular plan. Regular home visits by teachers would go a long way in building this parent-teacher relationship. Schools cannot limit themselves to engaging with the parents of their students only. The larger community from which students come needs to be engaged through invitations to the annual day and other school functions. Members of the school must also participate in the local events of the neighboring community. as much as possible box 1.31 inclusion and participation the principle of inclusion and participation for all has to be the core consideration across all elements of school culture school processes must be designed for the participation and benefit of all members of the school from all walks of life these processes have the potential to help every student and staff member experience a sense of belonging and a feeling of togetherness teachers must be alerted to see if any student is being or feeling excluded in the classroom or in informal settings during breaks play time or meals time teachers also need to ensure that students belonging to different genders socio-economic groups and with different skill abilities interact with one another without resistance or hesitation and develop meaningful bonds acts of discrimination and exclusion either consciously or inadvertently practiced by teachers could take many forms These often stem from the belief that some students cannot learn because of their background or ability and are labeled discriminatorily. There need to be forums for discussion and other processes that help the teachers become aware of their own biases and stereotypes and how they get reinforced in their classroom practices. School teams need to assess and not merely assume if their approaches and methods are inclusive. This can be done by frequently holding discussions with students after the learning activities about how they felt while participating and if they felt comfortable and experienced fairness. Such discussions can provide a space for all students to express the difficulties they experience and draw support from others. This also generates love, empathy and care for all. You are just listening to the National Curriculum Framework 
2023. This is brought to you by CIET and CERT, New Delhi, India.